Hi everyone, what's up? So today I want to solve with you a pretty cool related rates problem in which we're going to deal with a triangle but we're not going to use the Pythagorean theorem, okay? Let me show you. So we have this problem up here. We have that, well, there's going to be a beacon light four miles offshore and this beacon light will be rotating at three revolutions per minute, okay? That is going to be a rate of change that we're going to use in a pretty interesting way. Now we need to figure out how fast is this part of light uh, moving on the shoreline uh, when the beam makes a 60 degree angle with the shoreline, okay? This is the context, this is the information that we're given, and we need to figure out, well, how fast this part of light is moving, okay? That's our main goal. So now let's make a diagram of this situation. So we know we're gonna have a shoreline, so let me make something like this, and we know there will be a beacon uh, four miles offshore. So I'm gonna say it's something like this. So this would be our beacon, okay? Which I'm just gonna call this point B. And this would be our shoreline, and we know this would be a 90 degree angle. And we also know that, well, there is going to be a 60 degree angle uh, we, uh, between the shoreline and the, and the beam coming from the beacon. Okay, so we know we're gonna have a hypotenuse here. Okay, this is not the best line, but you know, it's decent. We know this is gonna be 60 degrees, okay? So now this is the main setup of the problem. And of course, well, we know this is gonna be four miles, okay? So now this is what we have. And we need to figure out uh, how fast this part of light is moving on the shoreline. And that is, well, how fast is this horizontal distance changing, okay? Now, remember our main principle or, well, not, no, maybe not the main principle of related rates problems, but one of the most important ones is that you only assign letters to things that are moving. So in this case, we know four is going to be constant. The distance from the shoreline to the beacon will not change. So we don't give this side any letters. We know this hypotenuse will change and we also know this horizontal distance will change. So I'm gonna say this distance is x and I'm gonna call this hypotenuse uh, h, okay? So now, uh, we know we need to figure out, so I'm gonna say here we need to find uh, dx dt, okay? Because this shows us how fast this distance is moving. And that is, well, how fast this part of light is moving on the shoreline, okay? Which is what we need. So now we need to find this derivative. And one way in which you can do that, since this is a triangle, well, you might think that, well, I can just use the Pythagorean theorem, you know? So I have that x squared plus four squared is gonna be equal to h squared, okay? However, this will not work out, okay? You know, you can just simply go through the algebra, see that uh, you're gonna get the following. You just simply get uh, x times dx dt is gonna be equal to uh, h times dh dt, okay? And there's a problem with this equation, okay? Uh, you're gonna get a factor of two for these two guys, but you know, you can just simply cancel it out because it's on both sides of the equation. So there's a problem with this equation, and that is, we do not know uh, how much uh, well, how fast the hypotenuse is changing with respect to time, okay? We do not know that. In You know, even if you use this piece of information, three revolutions per minute, you cannot derive any rate of change for the hypotenuse, okay? And something, now that I mention it, well, something that you can do instead of using the Pythagorean theorem is using this, um, this information about the revolutions per minute of the beacon light. So now... Three revolutions per minute means that the beacon light will go, you know, will make a full circle uh, every 20 seconds, okay? And that is what you get, uh, three full circles every minute. So now, we know that if we're playing with a circle, well, we have an angle that we care about, okay? And that angle, we can represent it in radians. In this case, we're going to use radians. So, we know that three revolutions per minute, well, that would be 6 pi, okay? Remember, I, sh I should write that, yeah. So we know one revolution... It's gonna be one full circle. So I'm gonna write it like this, one full uh, circle. And we know from this information, well, we can say that one revolution is gonna be equal to two pi radians, okay? Remember, two pi uh, radians is equal to 360 degrees, okay? Which is an entire cir circumference. So we know this is gonna be two pi rad, okay? One revolution. Now we have three of these every minute, which means that, well, we have if we, have, if we have three revolutions, that is going to be three times two pi radians. Three times two, you just simply get a coefficient of six. So you get six pi radians per minute, okay? And we know you could also write uh, this fraction as six pi radians over uh, 60 seconds, okay? 60 seconds. And it is pretty uh, easy to see that, well, you can simplify this fraction 
to get a rate of change uh, that goes like this. So you would you you would get you can just simply factor out a six from here. You would get a pi over ten radians per second. Okay, and this rate of change is equal to three revolutions per minute, okay? Because we know three revolutions is equal to six pi radians, okay? And now you can just simply switch the units for minutes and you get this rate of change. Now, this would be very similar if you've taken a physics class, you can see some resemblance with uh, angular velocity, okay? And now, if you think of angular velocity, you can probably see what we're gonna do uh, using a trigonometric function on this triangle. So now, if we have this, well, we could say that since the beacon light is going to be here, it's going to be up here, and it's going to be, you know, going in circles at this speed, we know there would be an angle that we can represent in this triangle. I'm going to call that angle theta. And we know that angle will be changing at this rate, okay? And then, well, if we know that this rate represents how fast this angle change changes, well, we can just simply say that d theta over dt is going to be equal to the rate of change. So we have pi over 10 radians per second, okay? This is going to be a derivative. This is going to be a rate of change that we're going to use. And this rate of change, well, will play the, the same will play the same role as dh dt. You know, in the Pythagorean theorem, if you had dh dt, you would have been able to, uh, to use that equation to solve for dx dt. But, well, now you have d theta dt. And so you need to find an equation that includes this derivative, okay? And I think now you can see what we're going to do. Well, one way in which you can relate, you know, you can use the theta as a function in an equation is by taking uh, tangent theta will be equal to x over 4, okay? So let me show you this. Uh, you can say that tangent theta will be equal to the opposite side, which we know is x, over the adjacent side, which we know is 4, okay? Now, I prefer to see this equation as 4 times... Uh, tangent theta is equal to x. Now, we can differentiate this equation and we will get uh, d theta dt from the left side of the equation, okay? Because tangent theta, our outside function is tangent and theta, well, it's gonna be a function. We know it's gonna change based on this information. So we need to use the chain rule in the following way. So now the derivative of the left side, we know it's gonna be four. So I'm gonna continue down here. So we have four times derivative of the outside function, tangent, it's derivative equals secant squared, so it's going to be secant squared theta, and we know theta is also a function, so we're going to use the chain rule, and we're going to say that this is d, d theta over uh, dt, okay? And now, well, we know that the derivative of x is going to be equal to 1, and x is also a function of time, so we're, we're going to use the chain rule, so we have the derivative of x, the outside function equals 1, and 1 times the inside function, that is going to be dx dt, okay? And so we get this final equation here. Now, it is pretty easy to see what we can do. Well, we can just simply, you know, plug the values for theta that we need. So we know uh, d, d theta over dt will equal uh, pi over 10. And now we need to find theta in this special instant or scenario that we have in here. And now it's very simple to see that, well, you have 90 degrees here and 60 degrees. That is going to be 150 degrees. We know we need to have, an, uh, have a 180 degree triangle. And that is, well, theta must be equal to 30 degrees. And it is very important to notice that since we're playing in degrees, but this equation, well, the, the derivative for theta is in radians per second. Well, we need to also use uh, units of radians for theta, okay? Now we know theta is going to be 30 degrees. And if we want to convert that into radians, well, you can see it like this. Uh, you know that 90 degrees equals a, a quarter of a full circumference. Now we know 360 degrees, a full circumference, would be equal to 2 pi. Now if you divide by 4, 2 pi, you get pi over 2. Now you know that 90 degrees would be equal to that pi over 2. And we know that 30 degrees is a third of 90 degrees. So you can multiply by 1 over 3, uh, pi over 2, okay? And so you basically get that, uh, I'm going to do it over here. So you just simply get that 30 degrees is going to be equal to 1 over 3 times pi over 2. Uh, radians, okay? And you just simply get that, well, this is pi over 6 radians, okay? So this is how you convert uh, 30 degrees uh, to radians, you know, without, you know, using a long formula. You can just simply reason, you know, based on proportions. So yeah, now we know this is the value we need for the input for secant. So, well, we can just simply write that the value that we're looking for is going to be 
dx dt and we know we're going to have four times secant squared of, uh, I'm going to write it like, yeah, parentheses. So we have uh, pi over 6 times the rate of change for the angle, which we know is going to be pi over 10. I'm not using any units, but the units work out nicely, so uh, you, you don't have to worry about them. And now, if you use your calculator to find out the exact number of this, well, you're going to see that. Well, we, you don't even have to use your calculator. You know, you can just simply use the unit circle. But uh, the thing is, if you use your calculator, you can see that this expression simply yields 8 pi over 15 uh, miles per second, okay? Which is a lot, but, well, if you think about it, you know, uh, this beacon, you know, the beam of light is going to be moving really fast on the shore. So this value makes sense, okay? Miles per second. And now another possible value that you can get is, uh, you know, every second you're going to move this, um, this distance. So if you multiply this value by 60, which is how, how you know, the distance that you would move in a full minute, well, then you can do, you, you'll see that you get uh, 32 pi miles per minute, okay? So now this could also be another uh, result that you get. And you would get this value if you, if you use uh, 6 pi radians per minute, okay? You can use this value, this unit, for the derivative of, uh, of theta, and then you would get this value over here, okay? But at the, at the end of the day, they're the same thing. You, you know, you can just simply multiply this value by 60, because every, you know, every second you're moving this distance, and you have 60 seconds in a minute, so you can multiply this distance by 60, and you'd get this value, okay? So that's been the entire problem. It's a really cool problem, because usually you would think of using the Pythagorean theorem to solve this triangle, you know, to solve... You have to solve the problem based on this triangle, but in this case, well, you cannot use the Pythagorean theorem, okay, which is what you usually do in triangle related rates problems. Uh, you need to use, you know, a trigonometric function, which is pretty cool, okay. And of course, well, you know, the notion of angular velocity, which is something that you're, you, you should be familiar with if you've taken a physics class. So, you know, the notion of angular velocity is also really helpful when you need to, you know, interpret what three revolutions per minute mean and how that represents a derivative for the angle theta, okay? So, you know, this problem is really cool because of all that. So, yeah, that has been everything. I hope that you enjoyed this video, you learned something, and see you in the following one. Bye!